Spiritual Bypassing When Spirituality Disconnects Us From What Really Matters Chapter 1 Avoidance and Holy Drag An Introduction to Spiritual Bypassing Spiritual bypassing, a term first coined by psychologist John Wellwood in 1984, is the use of spiritual practices and beliefs to avoid dealing with our painful feelings, unresolved wounds, and developmental needs. It is much more common than we might think and, in fact, is so pervasive as to go largely unnoticed, except in its more obvious extremes. Part of the reason for this is that we tend not to have very much tolerance, both personally and collectively, for facing, entering, and working through our pain, strongly preferring pain-numbing solutions, regardless of how much suffering such remedies may catalyze. Because this preference has so deeply and thoroughly infiltrated our culture that it's become all but normalized, Spiritual bypassing fits almost seamlessly into our collective habit of turning away from what is painful, as a kind of higher analgesic with seemingly minimal side effects. It is a spiritualized strategy, not only for avoiding pain, but also for legitimizing such avoidance in ways ranging from the blatantly obvious to the extremely subtle. Spiritual bypassing is a very persistent shadow of spirituality, manifesting in many ways, often without being acknowledged as such. Aspects of spiritual bypassing include exaggerated detachment, emotional numbing and repression, overemphasis on the positive, angerphobia, blind or overly tolerant compassion, weak or too porous boundaries, debilitating judgment about one's negativity or shadow side, devaluation of the personal relative to the spiritual, and delusions of having arrived at a higher level of being. The explosion of interest in spirituality, especially Eastern spirituality, since the mid-1960s, has been accompanied by a corresponding interest and immersion in spiritual bypassing, which has, however, not very often been named, let alone viewed as such. It has been easier to frame spiritual bypassing as a religion transcending, spiritually advanced practice, especially in the fast food spirituality epitomized by faddish phenomena like the secret. Some of the more glaringly plastic features of this, like its drive through servings of reheated wisdom, like don't take it personally, or whatever bothers you about someone is really only about you, or it's all just an illusion, are available for consumption and parroting by just about anyone. Happily, the honeymoon with false or superficial notions of spirituality is starting to wane. Enough bubbles have been burst. Enough spiritual teachers, Eastern and Western, have been caught with their halos down. Enough cults have come and gone. Enough time has been spent with spiritual baubles, credentials, energy transmissions, and guru centrism to sense deeper treasures. But valuable as the desire for more authentic spirituality is, such change will not occur on any significant scale and really take root until spiritual bypassing is outgrown, and that is not as easy as it might sound, for it asks that we cease turning away from our pain, numbing ourselves, and expecting spirituality to make us feel better. True spirituality is not a high, not a rush, not an altered state. It has been fine to romance it for a while, but our times call for something far more real, grounded, and responsible something radically alive and naturally integral, something that shakes us to our very core until we stop treating spiritual deepening as a something to just dabble in here and there. Authentic spirituality.